Jeffrey Garrett is following this presidential election like no other. At the age of 48, she is hoping to vote for the first time this November. Like close to six million other Americans, she has been denied that right until now because she was once convicted of a crime. She says this was especially painful for her when Barack Obama was first elected president. I was angry because I couldn't vote, but all my kids, and at the time my husband did, um, and I wanted to vote. I was really sad because it's the first black president and I didn't have a voice. The U.S. has one of the highest incarceration rates worldwide and imposes more restrictions on felons' voting rights than most other democracies. Laws vary from state to state. Four states have a lifetime ban on voting for convicted criminals, Iowa, Kentucky, Virginia, and Florida. Seven other states have lifelong voting bans depending on the crime committed. Most states withdraw felons' right to vote while they're serving their jail sentence and also while they're on parole and probation. Other states only limit voting rights during incarceration. Only New England states, Vermont and Maine, have no restrictions. Swing state Virginia has become the latest battleground over felon voting rights. In April of this year, the governor issued an order to restore the voting rights of all former felons who had completed their parole and probation. Almost half of the newly eligible voters were African American. Progressive voting rights activists welcomed the policy. It's, it's really about what kind of society you want to have. Is it an inclusive society? Is it a democratic society? Are all people involved in making decisions? Or is it a limited democracy for only the rich or the white or the powerful? But conservative politicians and activists sued the governor over the order. They argued that Virginia law only allows the governor to restore voting rights on an individual, case-by-case -case basis. Since 1830, Virginia has restricted felons from voting. No governor has ever interpreted that power to restore rights to be a blanket power that can be just issued in the manner that the governor has issued it. The Virginia Supreme Court declared the governor's order unconstitutional, but Terry will likely still be allowed to vote. That's because the governor is now individually restoring the right to vote for over 200,000 ex-felons. Terry struggled with drug addiction for decades and spent time in jail for shoplifting, but she's been in recovery for 10 years and considers being able to vote an important part of rehabilitation. I think I should have a right to vote because I think I, I have a voice. You know, I have an opinion. Um, it does matter to me what happens in the elections. You know, um, I shouldn't be judged for something I did over a decade ago. Terry is hoping for an end to the struggle over voting rights for felons, and that this November she can join her family at the ballot box, determining the direction America is headed in.